What's up, Ramley? You are now in the kitchen with Chef Nixon for all your fixings for the latest and greatest of VC men's basketball. Uh, so, we had a game over the weekend. Um, VCU at Richmond. How did it go? Let's check it out. Let's get into it. Uh, so, as we know, VCU, Richmond, black and blue classic, uh, a battle for the city. We, we used to play them once a season. Now we play them twice now that we're in the same conference. But each time it's still the same thing. No matter what's going on, uh, in Richmond's, rather, uh, Richmond's season, no matter what's going on, the VCU season, we can be completely dominant. They can be trash. And whenever we play each other, it just seems to be a battle. Um, making it worthy of, of calling it a rivalry. Um, it's really not a rivalry all time. We're up. 55 to 31 in the last 10 games were like last 10 games were like 8 and 2 or something like that or or 7 and 3 something like that some something crazy like that so we we were really uh dominating this whole this whole series and the whole rivalry however we always make it a game um so going into Saturday I didn't expect anything else uh we come, uh, VCU comes into the game on a three-game, on a two-game win streak, excuse me, um, beating St. Joseph at home and then going on the road and beating Davidson, which was a huge win. And we'll, I'll, kind of, I'll kind of touch on that later in, in, the, in the video. Um, Richmond comes to this game on a three-game win streak. Uh, they beat LaSalle, they beat Fordham, and they beat uh, University of Rhode Island. Um, so... Both teams coming with their uh, with their confidence pretty high. Um, starting out the game, they had a presentation for Grant Golden, uh, becoming uh, scoring two thousand points. And like, well, well, damn, you've been here, you've been here long enough. Um, I think he's actually been here for six six seasons, and it's like, yo, wow. When are you gonna leave? <laughs> when are you gonna leave? Uh, so, uh, but anyway, it's, it's 2,000 points is something to accomplish. I'm not going to take nothing from him, but, you know, six, six seasons to do so. Um, <laughs> so, U of R and the crowd showed up. Uh, it, so, it was definitely a packed house. Um, it was just all the all the ingredients for a, a true rivalry road game. Um, so, let's start with talking about the importance of this game. Uh, of course, let's start with ourselves. Uh, VCU, you know, we just had that, that great win at Davidson um, on the road, which is going to help us uh, tremendously because Davidson's a ranked team, or they were a ranked team at, at the time. Um, and then we, we look at it as far as, like, what we have coming up. You know, uh, we, were in a, we were in a position where, yeah, we're, we're winning certain games and we're doing okay, but... We don't have the, the quote unquote quality wins that we need to get an at large bid. Um, of course, everybody wants to win the tournament or the A10 tournament, excuse me. But you know, you don't want to have that be the only reason that you can get into you can get into the tournament because you know it's it's a tournament. Any, anything can happen. So you want to you want to give yourself the best chance you can um, outside of that as well. Um, so. Winning this game would be another uh, a notch uh, on our belt that would be good for our good for our, our, our record and, and good for our chances to get at large bid. Uh, because Richmond's not the greatest team overall, but it's still a conference road win. Um, Richmond is, is a, a semi tough place play, place to play. Um, so uh, I think it'd be, it'd be super great for us to get a, go down there and get a win. Um, for our record and just for our confidence. Um, so let's start really taking apart the game, what happened, how we come out. Uh, starting out, I was, uh, I knew the guys would be hyped because it's a rivalry game, but what I wasn't expecting was uh, one, Levi Stocker to play like he played. Uh, not disinterested, but 
as if he just couldn't get his gears going. It just seems like a half a step late on everything. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um, being that he's been playing so consistently as of late, especially getting touches, and the coach staff has made it a uh, made it a priority to make sure that he gets touches starting out the game, um, running certain plays specifically for him to to duck in and you know get his his game his game going. Now Richmond did a good job as far as like whenever he put the ball on the ground, they would just collapse. Um, and the first few times, I don't think he was prepared for that. Um, but however, it really kind of messed up his psyche as far as like knowing when the when the double team was going to come. So it made him kind of hesitant um, throughout the game um, because there was times where you know he just could have went up and shot it, but he didn't feel comfortable enough because he never really got it got a chance to get in the rhythm. And then when he put it down, he would get it swiped away. Um, so it was just a really tough game for Levi. Um, however. Hassan Ward put together one of the best games of the season for himself. Um, he came out and uh, he was hitting. He was hitting his. He was making his layups, the, the shots that he that he should make, and he also made some tough ones as well. Um, and I, I believe Coach Rose touched on this and saying like, you know, when he's just flying around having fun, he's a different kind of guy. Um, and I can agree with that. I mean, I've seen. I've seen. Uh, I've seen Hassan in the last few games where you can tell he's in his own head about certain things, not playing the way that he would have would have uh, uh, liked or to limit that or to a level that I think he thinks he can play. Um, and I think that kind of that kind of weighed on him a little bit. But today he came out a little bit more carefree. Um, and I guess in role, role games, you know, everybody's gonna be booing you, so it's just really just you. You know, you know what I mean? It's really kind of you against the world type type of type of uh, situation mentally, so it's a little bit easier than when you feel like you're if you're not performing, you feel like you're letting the fans down. Um, so it was good to see him come out uh, and be aggressive, um, and I hope he can just continue to do to do the same thing. Um, now, one thing it, it could be um, as far as his success this game, I'm not trying to take anything away from him, but uh, you know Richmond doesn't really have any high flyers. They don't have any uh, any real true bigs, you know. Uh, Grant Golden is like six eight, but he's more of a he's more of a four than he is a five um, pick and pop type player. Not really truly physical, um, not truly like dominant uh, on on the defensive end. Um, you don't have to worry about him really blocking your shots, you know, when you, when you drive to the cup. So that also could have played played into. Uh, Hassan's success. However, I'm just glad he gave us what he gave us um, because we needed we needed that uh, a lot when it came down to the stretch. Um, so this whole game, I, I, it felt weird from the jump because I, and I'm, I'm I'm trying to figure out is it just my bias of how I was thinking the game should have went, or was it really like was it really like I just felt that we should have been up 15 points throughout the first half playing it. I felt like we should have been able to control this game and uh, really kind of cruise to a victory um, after how we played against Davidson. I know our defense is always going to be there. It's, you know, it's our calling card. Um, I figured our offense would struggle a little bit, but then we'll be able to pick it up because Richmond, Richmond's defense can confuse you because it's a, it's a matchup zone where – you're not truly sure how to attack it because every, everything switched. Um, they play like a prevent you to drive type of defense. Um, but <clears throat> but they don't do it that well, especially this year. Not they haven't been. They're not the same U of R from from previous teams that were really good on defense and can give you hell on offense. Um, this team is, is like a watered down version. Just to be honest, um, so I, I knew that we can we can take advantage of them offensively. However, um, I think we play best when we can play in inside and out. Hassan gave us some some, some good points, but his 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 offense is based on you know drop off dunks, um, offensive rebounds, uh, 
putbacks, stuff like that. As far as I think our offense is best when Levi is playing super well and we can throw it in there and get some points through him, um, get a defense, respect to him, and then move the ball from there. Um, but being that he didn't perform to his best ability this game, it made our offense a little bit stagnant at times. Um, however, it, it ended up working out. Um, our defense was super stingy, as usual. Um, I think I think Richmond, there were a couple times where Richmond would just be, be dribbling the ball, and I don't think that they were even concerned about scoring it. They were just concerned about, you know, not uh, not uh, turning it over. Um, they tried to go to a lot of different isolations. Uh, what's the guy's name? Because I got to give Keyshawn Curry some love for this. But they tried to go do a lot of isolation ball um, because the guys, he's a little bit, he's a little bit taller than, uh, than Keyshawn and most of our guards for real. However, um, we guarded him so well that he wasn't able, they weren't able to really use that matchup against us. Um, let's see, what's my guy's name? Burton. Yes, Tyler Burton. Um, a 6'7", 6'7", 4". Uh, Keyshawn Curry was guarding him a lot, and they tried to get, get him uh, some, some post work, and I got to give Keyshawn a lot of love because they went to it multiple times, multiple, multiple times, and uh, Keyshawn locked that thing up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Burton went 1 for 12 from the field, 0 for 5 from 3. Uh, and basically was a non-factor on the offensive end. Um, it got to a point where he, like, I felt like their defense was so tired. I mean, their offense was so tired of going against our, our defense that they were just settling for 35-footers. Like, it's, it's five seconds, seven seconds left on the clock. I don't want to call for a screen. I'm just going to shoot this. I think we have a better chance, a higher percentage of just shooting it. Um, so it was remarkable. It was remarkable to see uh, to see that. Um, and I felt like that was one of the reasons I kind of felt like, yo, they really had a hard time sh- uh, scoring on us. Um, and the only time I felt like they even got some type of rhythm with scoring with us is like through our turnovers and uh, getting beat on the backdoor cuts. Um, and to be honest with you, I think the only time we truly got beat on the backdoor cuts is when we were gambling and not just playing solid defense. Um, once you feel like you got somebody figured out, you, you feel like, okay, you can just gamble. You can gamble a little bit. Like, instead of just chasing, instead of just chasing him through the screen, I'll try to shoot the gap. Or instead of, or, or instead of, uh, instead of not gambling and, and reaching and going for the steal, you know, I'll, you know, saying I'll, I'll just let him catch it and pressure the ball. That's kind of how um, we want. That's kind of how we want to we want to defend him, because of course, just like Campbell, just like uh, Davidson, Richmond has a very similar offense where it's a lot of come togethers. There's a lot of come together back door cuts, pop backs. There's a lot of rub screens, um, and it's a good thing we played Davidson because I feel like Davidson runs the offense a little bit well, a lot better, um, and they had better shooters. Um, than Richmond, so it was kind of it was kind of uh, a setup for Richmond to, for uh, Richmond to play us immediately after Davidson, um, and I, I don't know if that was by design, but if it was, good looking, um, Telly, good looking Telly, that was by design. Um, so foul calls, um, I felt as if the refs were bad but at times I felt like as if they were consistent and then times I felt like they were inconsistent like they called tiki tack fouls both ways uh, but I just feel as if they called more of us and it could just be because our, our style of play is, a, is more aggressive than Richmond um, our man to man defense is, is more ball hounding and ball hawking than, uh, than Richmond's so we could, we you know, we, we do a lot more scrambling around than Richmond. So it, it, it could it could have been just a style of play 
that the refs uh, weren't weren't used to. I, I'm, I'm assuming, but the foul the foul calls were were crazy. Um, Ace picked up a, a ton of uh, tiki tacks. Um, I felt I felt as if I felt as if uh, none of our bigs outside of Hassan really were able. I mean, Delos did okay too. He didn't do bad. Um, but I felt outside of Hassan, our bigs were inna- uh, incapable of really producing the way that they, they usually do. Now, there were some times where we made key buckets. I know Levi had a, had a big one. I think Mikael Brown-Jones had had, had a couple uh, moments. But collectively, I felt like our, our bigs uh, struggled a little bit this game. Uh, and then... You know, when you have a lead against a team and you let them hang around, it's always one of these things where it's always one of these things where I fear that if you let a team hang around long enough and they just keep it close enough, anything can happen in the last in the last few minutes. And that's kind of what was going on uh, at this game, where Richmond Richmond would be down ten points and then somehow some way they just bring it back and we'll push it back out. And then they'll bring it right back in. And coming down the stretch, they were on the verge of bringing it back in, bringing it back in, bringing it back in, to the point where they were, uh, I think they were tied. Um, well, before we get there, before we get there, Ace fouls out, right? Now, I don't know about anybody else, but when Ace fouled out, I was like, kind of like, ooh, shoot. I know our defense is going to stay solid, but. We all remember how our office was before Ace got there. How are we going to perform these last few minutes, closing games, which we struggled with this season early on? Um, how are we going to How are we going to perform? How are we going to you know manage this? Uh, but I tell you what, Vince Williams. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. Vince Williams looks really, really good. Really, really good. Uh, he had so many key plays throughout this game. Like from early on, picking up two fouls on, on KO, huge. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean. Huge uh, from uh, from uh, from that to Ace Baldwin goes out of the game, and Vince starts running the one, and it's not like. It, it's not like he was being passive. There were there were times where things were going right. They're trying to we're trying to run the offense, and and we're almost turning it over. We don't seem to be confident in what we're doing. Vince would get the ball to be like, set the screen, <laughs> hey, set the screen, and he was working the pick and roll game like he was Ace Baldwin, and that was crazy to see. I mean, he had one dime where. Uh, the Loach or was Hassan one of them? It could have been both. Um, and he had a came off screen pick and roll and just dimed them out where it's just them in the rim for easy dunk. And it was just like he was in the zone. Uh, he was in the zone and how he was running the team was like that's that's legendary VCU stuff right there. You know those are what VCU greats do. Uh, and I know Vince. I, I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to just crown him yet or for anything yet. But Saturday at U of R, he played like a legend. He played like a legend, um, and, it, and it, it was it was super dope because he was doing everything. We'll get into that a little bit a little bit later. Um, so back to what I was saying before. Games hella close. I think I think we're down. No, we're not down. We're up one or we're tied. Uh, we're trying to run offense. Somehow, the ball gets tipped and it goes all the way to the backcourt, almost stolen. Vince gathers the ball, dribbles it up, and I'm not gonna lie to you. It didn't look like he truly wanted to shoot it in like live. It didn't look like he truly wanted to shoot it. Like it didn't really look like he had his feet set to shoot it. Um, but he went up left-handed, and if I didn't think he was going to shoot it or how he shot it, it was a little awkward to me. I can only imagine the defender trying to guard him, um, and he just pulls up, 
lets it lets it go from the top of the key bottoms. And that basically that basically sealed the game. I'm not saying they still didn't have a chance because they really did have a chance at the end, but that completely put us in the driver's seat for the remainder of the game. Um, and that was almost reminiscent of Trevion hitting shots like that, uh, Brad hitting, Brad Burgess hitting shots like that. That was a tremendous, a tr- tremendous confi- confidence-wise and tremendous uh, shot-making capability-wise. Uh, and I think, I think that Vince has consistently been taking a step up, a step up, a step up um, as the season goes on. And I don't know if this is going to be a plateau thing. I don't know if this is going to be the emergence of, of Vince Williams where to where he's playing at even a higher level moving forward. Uh, but it's going to be hard to top Saturday's game. Uh, so let's get into these games. Let's get into these game stops. Uh, excuse me. We get these game stats. Uh, the final score was 64 to 62 in the favor of DCU. Um, and there's nothing better than getting a win against uh, Richmond. Um, but VCU was led by Vince Williams, who uh, flirted with a triple double. Um, he had 22 points, 10 rebounds, and 8 assists. Hell of a game. Hell of a game. And I was having a conversation with, uh, with Arnold Henderson. And we were saying how, like, you know, not saying that we think that Vince is just a lottery pick or even an NBA prospect. Yeah, you know, ideally, you know, we didn't, you know, come into, we didn't come into the season thinking that. Um, but if he continues to perform at this level, I don't know. <laughs> he might be getting some calls, you, you, you know. Um, of course, winning is going to is going to be the key factor, and if he's playing like this and we win and get to the tournament, in a game or two in the tournament, you never know, man. Uh, it's 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 going to be hard to deny games like this where he does everything. He's not only is he doing that for one game, he's leading the team in like four of the five major uh, stat categories. That's amazing. Uh, like LeBron James esque type stuff, you know. Um, and then Hassan Ward added 14 points and 10 rebounds. Um, and see, this is the type of thing that I feel like Hassan. First off, I'm, I'm happy that he did that. I'm happy he came out and he played well. I'm happy he came out and had fun. But this is the type of thing where I feel like Hassan can do all the time if he just continues to work outside of practice and just flies around and does what makes him great not trying to do anything else but what makes him great um so it was, it was super it was super good to see him do well um for richmond they were led by grant golden who had 18 points and nine rebounds um jason Gillard had 14 points and six assists uh, both of them are 28 <laughs> uh but they, they played they played well and they try to they try to keep richmond in there um but uh you know they can't mess with us. Um, <laughs> so uh, my low key player of the game, and mind you, the reason I I'm, I chose him as the low key player of the game is not because of something he did in the stat sheet. My low key player of the game is Josh Banks, um, and if you look at the box score, Josh Banks has zero 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 one zero 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 zero, and then he played play like you know twelve minutes, um, but. Josh Josh Banks was not getting a lot of playing time this this game, but due to the foul trouble and a few of our bigs just not being able to handle the moment of the game, um, Josh Banks got some minutes. And he could have went in there scared. He could have went in there over-anxious. Um, he could have went in there doing too much. He could have went in there with a selfish mindset. And he did none of that. He played solid basketball for the few minutes he was given. In key moments, got a key steal. Um, and, yeah, 
Like so, none of that's really outside of still nothing, nothing, nothing like that's gonna really show up in the box score. But he was able to step up and, and give us huge minutes when we were down, uh, when we were, when, our, when our men were starting to get down because of foul trouble or anything else. He gave us quality minutes that helped us propel us, help propel us to a victory. So, shout out to Josh Banks. Um, moving forward, um, it's two two great road wins. Uh, Davidson, Richmond, or great and good road wins. Um, I think that they're they're important that, to get. Um, however, I think we still have to um, we have to beat Dayton again. I think this that's going and that's our next game. I think we're going to have to beat them again. That's going to be uh, huge for our resume. Um, I think we're definitely going to have to get the St. Louis game. I think that's the last game of the season. Um, who else we have? Who else we have coming up? We got Dayton. Uh, George Mason is going to be a game. We're, like, I mean, to be honest with you, I, I would love for us to just win out. Um, but if we don't, you know, there's some games on here that we can't lose. Like Duquesne can't 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 lose that one. Fordham can't lose that one. Um, even Richmond game when they come to us, I don't I don't think we can afford to lose that one. Um, so moving forward, we, we I would prefer us to just run run the table. Um, I, I'm not how sure I'm not how sure we we will do with that, but um, I know our defense will, will keep us in all the games. But uh, but but just for out of conference purposes, I think that we should should run the table because originally they only had what Davidson getting in the only team from the A10, um, and I, I'm not sure how that's going to change if. You, you know, this is something to keep your eye on. So, Dayton, a key win. Like, let's see. Rhode Island wouldn't be a, a, a horrible loss in my in my eyes. And, and mind you, I'm just I'm just saying the like the games that if we were to lose, I don't I hope we win all of them. Uh, but Rhode Island wouldn't be the worst. I mean, Richmond wouldn't be the worst. Um, Dayton wouldn't. Dayton definitely wouldn't be the worst. At all, but if we were to get all these wins, I think we get an at-large bid. You know what I mean? We get all these. How many games left? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We get. We get six. We get six of these. Uh, of these last eight, and I feel like we get an at-large bid. But include those six would have to include the Dayton game. And George Mason, the George Mason games. If we do that, we'll, we'll be in really good shape. Really good shape. Um, so Dayton on Wednesday at VCU in the stew. Um, I told y'all, and I'm gonna keep telling you, this is one of the most exciting teams uh, to watch in VCU that we had for a while, just because we hang our hat on the defensive end, and that it just makes the game so much more competitive. It just makes the game go to the wire so much um, and it, it just makes it so much more exhilarating and awesome to me when we pull it out and we've been doing a great job of pulling the games out as of late so uh, I'm ready super ready for uh, for Dayton um, I'm super ready for Coach Grant to make his return to the stew um, and I'm ready to see if our boys take care of business so like I always say put your seatbelt on, strap in, put your hard helmet, put your hard hat on you know, get ready for the ride. And until next time, peace.